guys, if you if you read the entire announcement, um, you saw that this is going to be a short video. I want to do just a, a, a quick review of what we did in class yesterday or what you guys did on Canvas yesterday. And then I've got a quiz is for you to complete after this. Um, I know it's a little bit more difficult to get a gauge on how we're doing at home during the virtual weeks. I was actually super, uh, super impressed with how the kids in class handled the area of rectilinear figures because I know it can be confusing. Um, but I walked away yesterday feeling really, really good about what we did. So in class, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to review a couple of the figures that we looked at yesterday. And then we're going to look at a couple that are a little bit different, maybe a little bit more of a challenge. Um, maybe one of those specifically, but I just want you to see those before you do the quizzes because you may see them on there. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, but the first two or three will just kind of be a review of what we did yesterday. So if you watched the video yesterday, which most of you did, I know some of you didn't, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, this will look fairly familiar to you. So remember, we've got our rectilinear figures. First thing we're going to do is we're always going to split it in half. Um, again, you can go vertically. I always like to go horizontally. It's just what I'm comfortable doing. And that's not perfect, but it should be. Uh, and then as soon as I split it, I'm going to label it. I've got rectangle A and rectangle B. So you've got to be able to determine what your length and your width are. So if you remember, we kind of cover up B, cover up A so we can look at them separately. And when I look at rectangle A, the only numbers I really see are the 10, the 4, and the 5. Um, but my length and my width for this one are going to be 10 and 4. Guys, it can't be 5 because if I highlight A, let me see if I can get a different color here. If I'm looking at rectangle A, that five right here only represents this small chunk and I need the whole bottom of A and I can get that on the opposite side with 10. Same thing with B and I'll highlight B a different color. If I cover up A, the only numbers that I really see again are five, five and nine. My length and my width here are gonna be five and five because this nine does not represent just that chunk of B. It represents the whole side. It represents A and B. So I couldn't use that. So again, find the area of rectangle A, area of rectangle B, add them together, and I'll find the area of my rectilinear figure. So length times width for A, 10 times 4, would give me 40 square feet. And down in rectangle B, if I did, or square B, I should say, if I did 5 times 5, length times width, that would give me 25 square feet. Last step, I got to take those two areas, add them together, and that would give me a total of 65 square feet. The only, the problems I noticed yesterday were not math mistakes, it's just people occasionally were picking the wrong number for length and width. Remember, it's got to represent an entire side. So let's look at one more of those that kind of looks the same as what we did yesterday. Got another rectilinear figure here. Numbers are a little bit bigger. Um, if you're not comfortable with your facts, you can use calculator on the area and perimeter questions. I want us to get towards or get to the point where we just feel comfortable with our facts. Got my rectilinear shape. We're going to split it. Boom. Now we're going to label it. We got A and B. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight my rectangle here a different color and my rectangle down at the bottom a different color and then we're going to try to find the length and the width of both so if i cover up b when i look at a i see 12 i see 3 i see 10. when i cover it i don't see this 8 down at the bottom but my length and my width are going to be 12 and 3. it cannot be 8 because 8 only represents this small chunk i need the whole bottom which I see on the opposite side. I got the whole top, which gives me 12. And guys, it can't be 10 because 10 does not represent just this side of A. It represents A and B, and I'm ignoring B right now. So if I need just this part, I can find it on the opposite side. Same thing for B. If I cover up A, now when I cover up A, the only two numbers I see are 7 and 4. But the same reason why you wouldn't use 10 for A, you wouldn't use it for B. That represents A and B, and I need only B. So find my areas here, 
area of A link times width would give me 36 square feet. Area of B link times width would give me 28 square feet. And then of course, my last step would be 36 plus 28. 8 plus 6 gives me 14. 4 stays, 1 goes. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6. That would give me an answer of 64 square feet. Again, feel pretty good about those, especially for my people in class. Just looking at the numbers that I have already from the people who have done these, done their assignment from yesterday, uh, those are pretty good as well. So I don't think you're really missing a beat doing this at home as long as you're watching these videos. Now, this is another rectilinear figure that looks a little bit different. And this is where you may want to change your strategy. Oh, no, I'm frozen. Oh, my computer's dying. No, 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 no. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Quick, quick, quick. Come on. Plug it in. Is this thing on? Am I working? Can you hear me? My computer just died and I was terrified. You can probably see the pain in my eyes that I was going to have to redo all of that. Hallelujah. I'm right back in it. Okay. Whew. Like I was saying, on this one, you may have to change your strategy because in the past, we have gone horizontal every time to try to split it into two different shapes. Now, when I split this one horizontally, I see a few different places that I can place a line. Now I can do it here, but when I do that and if I label it A and B, there's nothing wrong there with rectangle A, but if I look at B, I just split that and B is still a rectilinear figure. So what I could do is I could do a second split and then I would have three rectangles, A, B, and C. Now that way I'd have to do area for one, two, three different triangles where if you didn't want to do that, sometimes you can avoid it by instead of doing a horizontal line, you could do a vertical line. I could do a line right here and then I've just got two rectangles. I've got A and I've got B. Now if you did split it twice into three different rectangles, it would still work. You'd still get the right answer. Um, I know we're just a little bit more comfortable probably doing it with two rectangles. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight. Y'all, that's awful. Rectangle A, highlight rectangle B. And we're just going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to see if we can find the length and the width. So I'm going to cover up rectangle B. Rectangle A to me is pretty clear. When, I look in, when I'm looking for length and width, I see 11 feet and I see 8 feet. Only two numbers I see. So the area of rectangle A would be 88 square feet. And if I cover up A and I look at B, again, to me, that's pretty clear. When I look at the length and the width, I've got 2 and 7, which would give me an area of 14 square feet. And the last step there would be 88 plus that 14. 4 plus 8 is 12. 2 stays, 1 goes. 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 1 more is 10. That would give me an area of 102 square feet. So I always want you to try to break it into just two rectangles if you can. If not, it can still be done. Um, it just requires a little bit more work. An example of that will be what I'm going to show you next. It's the last one I'm going to show you. You will see something like this on your quizzes. This is a shape where two rectangles is unavoidable. I cannot draw one line and split this into two different rectangles or squares. Like if I did a line here, I've got a rectangle right here, but this is still rectilinear. If I put one here, still have one rectangle, one rectilinear. Same thing if I go horizontal. If I go here, I've got a square down here, rectilinear. Same thing on the other side as well. And I can't just split it down the middle. I've got to go from a corner, uh, but still even then I would have a rectilinear. So there are going to be times where you cannot avoid doing the area of three different rectangles. Um, and since I know it can't be avoided, I'm going to do what I'm comfortable with and split them horizontally. 
and I'm going to label them A, B, and C. This is where it's going to get tricky. So I need you to watch. It might not hurt you to rewind this after you see it and watch it a second time. I'm going to start with B and C because those are easier for me to find. So you kind of got to turn your hand at an angle. I want to cover up A and C and just look at B. Now, when I'm looking at only B, everything is blocked for me except for my length and my width. I see four and a three. Now, I wouldn't use this seven because seven represents this entire chunk. And I only need this little part of B. So my area of rectangle B, length times width, would give me 12 square feet. Same thing if I'm looking at C. If I cover that up and I'm only looking at C, I only see my length and my width, which would again be four and three. It can't be seven. Seven represents C and A. I only need C. This would also be 12 square feet. All right, let me highlight rectangle A. If I cover up A and C, I see a number at the top, I see two numbers at the sides. I see nine at the top, which I feel pretty good about being one of my sides because it's the only number up there. And then on the sides, I see seven. But guys, that's seven for the same reason it can't represent B and C, it cannot represent A. That's seven, and I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this out. I know these are, tw oh Lord, uh, let me get back to this. I know that, These were both 12 square feet. Like I said, A is definitely, or nine is definitely gonna represent one side of my rectangle A. But like I was saying, the same reason C cannot represent A is because it cannot represent C. Seven does not only represent this chunk. We always get it from the opposite side. But if you look from the opposite side, Again, we only see seven. We only see that number that represents both of those sides. Here's where you got to get creative. If I know opposite sides are equal, I can use that to my advantage. I can put a number right here. Now, again, I know this whole side is seven, but I know a chunk of it right here for C is equal to four. Because if I have four here, I've got four on the opposite side as well. Now, if I know for a fact that this whole side has to be seven, and I've already got four, I've got to figure out what's left. Left meaning subtract. If I take that seven, get rid of the four I already have, I have three feet left, which means I've got to have three feet here and here. And I know this three is correct on this side because this whole side's gotta be equal to seven. I've got three here. That means there's four feet left to go right here. And if I look on the opposite side, that matches. Now, when I cover up B and C, I see my length of nine feet. I see my width of three feet. I can go length times width and get 27 there, 27 square feet. The only thing that's different here, instead of adding two numbers, I would add all three. I would do 12 plus 12 and get 24 square feet. Add my 27 square feet. Seven plus four is 11. Two plus two is four plus one is five. And that would give me 51 square feet. So that one's a little bit different. And I lied and said I was only going to show you one. I feel a little bit more comfortable if I showed you two. Um, let me change some numbers around. Let's go, let's say 12, and let's, let's flip this puppy. Let's do this little action right here. Make it look a little bit different. We're doing some live editing right here. Let's drop 13 here. Let's say three. Six feet. 
And I'm good with three feet and three feet, I think. All right, this should work. All right, same deal. I cannot avoid having to do three different shapes here. Um, again, I could go vertically here and here. I just like to do horizontal lines, so I would split it across here and here. I've got rectangle A. I've got B, uh, square B, tech, it, it will end up being, and I've got rectangle C. So it might be a little bit easier for you to cover this way. So I'll just start at the top and work my way down. When I cover up B and C and I look at rectangle A, that one's not too bad. That one's pretty clear. I've got my length and my width. Length times width, six times five will give me 30 square feet. All right. I'm gonna change my color for B. If I'm looking at B, the only two numbers that I see, guys, are three and 13. Now, if I do this, I only need what's covered in blue. I can't use this 13, because re 13 represents this side of A, this side of B, and this side of C. If I want just this chunk, I can look on the opposite side and I can get it. I've got three right here, all right? so. I can circle that. Now I've got to figure, sorry. Now I've got to figure out what I've got either here or here. Opposite sides are equal. It might even be tougher from this angle. So if I'm looking at rectangle A, the top of rectangle A is six. The bottom of rectangle A has to be six. So guys, if from here to here has to be six feet, and I've already got three feet, I've got to figure out what's left to go here to represent my small chunk of B. Six feet, already have three feet. How many are left? Six minus three would give me three. So I know for a fact my length and my width for B are gonna be three, and I can check that. If the top's three, the bottom's gonna be three. So if I put three right here, and then I add, three plus three here, which is equal to six, my opposite side has to be six, which it is. So when I'm looking at B, my length and my width here are three and three, three times three is nine square feet. Again, A is, or rectangle C is pretty similar to rectangle A. When I cover up A and B, I just see my length and my width, five feet times six feet. It can't be this three feet here because it only represents this tiny chunk. I need the whole thing. And if I did my length, my width five times six, that would give me 30 more square feet. Last thing I got to do, add them all together. 30 plus 30 gives me 60 square feet plus the nine in the middle. That would be 69 square feet. So that one, probably not going to see it on your test. Probably not going to see it on the EOG. Definitely going to see it on an EOG Friday. Definitely going to see it on your quizzes here in a few minutes. So I'm not worried about examples like one, two, and three. Uh, I admit that that one that we just did two of is pretty challenging. So on that quizzes, 10 questions, I would fully expect, I mean, this is setting the bar pretty high. I fully expect everybody to get at least a 90. If you're going to miss one, I would understand if it was one like the last two. Most important thing is, guys, I know if you gave effort or not. It shows me the average time you spent on each question. It's very clear if you gave your best effort and tried, gave your best, basically. Um, it's also pretty clear who's watching the videos. Uh, out of 13 people who should be watching, I had two views on a video yesterday. If you're one of those two, appreciate it. And I can tell in the grades, guys. Uh, so please make sure you're watching. Uh, it'll help you a ton. Uh, and I hope something that you saw in this video, if you struggled a little bit yesterday, hopefully you saw something today that helped out. Um, good luck. If you need help, I'm zooming from two to three tomorrow. So I'm here if you need me. All right. Bye.